I'm here today from the SBI National Symposium with members of the Social Media Committee and we're going to introduce ourselves. I am Toma Amofoye. I am an Associate Professor at MD Anderson Cancer Center. I'm Margaret Yacobozzi. I'm a breast imager at Wake Forest and the Fellowship Director of Breast Imaging there. Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Roth. I am a radiologist, a breast and abdominal radiologist at Cooper University Hospital in um, South Jersey. I'm also the fellowship director there as well. And I'm Dr. Tiffany Chan. I'm an assistant clinical professor at UCLA in breast imaging. So we're really excited to have this opportunity to highlight some of the must touch, must know aspects of the uh, conference so far. Uh, we're gonna dive right in. So. I'm going to ask each of you, what is one session that you have attended that you just really enjoyed and why? So I attended a session on MRI image optimization. And one of the things I really liked about it was being able to bring something back home and immediately use it. So one of the things they talked about was how to troubleshoot when your MRI images aren't the way you would like them to be. Mm -hmm. So that was great. Very important. Yeah. Very important. <laughs> Happens all yeah. the time. Yeah. So always good to have those like yeah. practical tips. Yeah. I actually love the, the uh, sessions on contrast mammography. We use it a lot at Cooper. We've been using it since 2011, and a lot of people don't know a lot uh, about it. Um, actually, there's a lecture this afternoon by Jordana Phillips of how to incorporate it into your practice, and I think that's really important. Um, yeah, we could talk more about why I love it, but I think it's a great modality that's underutilized. Awesome. Well, you know, one session that really stuck with me uh, was a session on an update on clinical trials. I think these are all very important for patient care, and it brings, brings us all pretty much up to speed on things that are happening. So there was a session that was on things like the Comet trial um, and the Wisdom trial, all things really just to improve our field. For those of us that are, may not be at those institutions or may not be at the forefront of that research, it's still very relevant for us, and these conferences are great for us to kind of learn more about them. So that was my favorite session so far. And I think part of what stood out to me in that session, getting the updates on clinical trials, is that several of these clinical trials, like the WISDOM trial, which is trying to use um, personalized uh, patient data to inform screening, these are trials that have a large uh, social media footprint. The mm -hmm. patients are aware of some of these trials being ongoing, and they may come to you as a radiologist asking you about details of the trial. And so hearing these updates from other radiologists allows you to be well informed in, in discussing these with our patients. Right. So now we're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, talking to all of the um, viewers at home or here at the conference, what is one top tip you have learned from this conference that you would like to share that you're, you're taking back home? I really want to institute uh, abbreviated MRI. I think that there's definitely a population of patients that, that would be a great fit for that. Um, you know, maybe the dense breast tissue and intermediate risk and may not qualify for MRI. I think they're great. Uh, I do like contrast mammogram in that setting as well, but I, I do think there's a role for abbreviated MRI. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And one of the tips that I learned about instituting abbreviated MRI at this conference is you have to think beyond just the protocol scan time and think of the entire table time and the mm -hmm. technologist time. And so even when your protocol says, okay, you have 10 minutes of scan time, remember that it does take time to get the patient on and off the table, um, switch out the breast coil or clean out the room yes. and those sorts of things. Um, so some institutions have grouped their abbreviated MRI yes. patients together to try to minimize some of the uh, turnover time. Yeah, so I think I they said that. they schedule them like three in an hour. They just do abbreviated MRI and that makes it easy with less turnover. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. I think one tip I have, maybe not that I've learned directly from this conference, but one tip I would give to maybe future attendees or something that I learned um, is to really take advantage of the exhibit hall. So that's where we are currently at, and I don't know if you can possibly see, but around us, there's all these really fantastic vendors showing off new equipment, new technologies. There's even updates on things that you may be already familiar about. Let's say the Savvy Scout, they have something new that's coming out um, in the next few months. So for me, you know, I looked at the, at the exhibit hall maybe yesterday, um, but I kind of wish I had done it on the first day, and, because it does take a lot of time, and there's a lot of really cool things to see. Yeah. 
Um, and it really does, you know, you can meet vendors that will be coming into your area. So for instance, um, I met some associates that will be coming into the Los Angeles area this coming fall. It's really a great way to kind of put your name out there, get some great contacts, um, and just learn about what's happening in our industry. Um, one of the great tips that I learned was um, there was a great talk by a plastic surgeon talking about oncoplastic um, surgeries and exactly um, about acellular dermal matrix and that sort of thing. So one of the tips I learned is what exactly to look for um, in the history. When I'm reading, um, doing an ultrasound on a patient, reading an MRI, really um, knowing what to look for in the op note maybe to make the read easier and make more sense. Great. Yeah, I agree. That talk by uh, Dr. Mark Clemens on the reconstruction techniques was really great. You know, one thing I noticed is I also met a lot of uh, residents and medical students that are interested in radiology and I think that's great that they're getting their feet wet now and I saw that they had some hands-on training where they can practice their ultrasound skills and their biopsy skills and I think it's great especially if you're interested in breast imaging and it's a great way to network. Yeah. So what would you say that you are most excited about in breast imaging? Mm -hmm. mm. I think using AI in the right way. I think, you know, there's always this fear that AI is going to replace radiologists. And I do, don't think that's the case. I think that radiologists that know how to use artificial intelligence will replace, will replace radiologists <laughs> that don't know how to use it. So, yeah. I think that's really true. I mean, AI can be very, um, it can be very intimidating for a lot of us. Uh, some of us don't really have much background in it, uh, but we know it's definitely happen happening. And I think learning about all the different ways that it can affect um, our field is really great because it's going to be, it's the future, it's coming, slash it's already present. Mm -hmm. And the more that we really learn about it, the more that we can utilize it uh, for our benefit. Um, just like you know, Robin was saying. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and I think uh, you've been using contrast enhanced yeah. mammography for a while, so it's not necessarily a new thing, but um, for a lot of institutions, they're not using it yet. So um, we started not too long ago, and we've had some great results. And um, I'm excited about, um, there was someone this morning talking about how they're starting to use contrast mammography um, biopsy, so being able to biopsy with it. And I know, you know, when tomosynthesis first came out, one of the great challenges was seeing something on tomosynthesis you wanted to biopsy, but not having the equipment to biopsy yeah. yes. with it. So it was a huge thing yeah. when we were able to have that stereotactic table with tomosynthesis. I agree. I agree. And this is a great conference to mm -hmm. learn not just some of those research uh, developments, but really practical clinical totally. developments yes. as well, yeah. right? I talked about this yesterday. I don't think the audio caught it, but like we use contrast mammography a lot. And one of my favorite ways to use it is if you have a category five lesion that you're going to biopsy, before you do any intervention, get a contrast mammogram as almost like a staging study because oftentimes you'll see something in the other breast that warrants your attention. So before you put your needle in it, you'll get more accurate sizing of the mass mm -hmm. and just get a better landscape of the breast and see if anything else needs attention. Really wonderful tip. Yeah. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. <laughs> so I'll ask you, is there something you were surprised to learn? I learned about how high physician burnout is. Like I think it was said it was like near 80%, especially in radiology. I mean, isolation, increased workloads, you know, computer problems, all these things are very specific to radiologists. Maybe and um, yeah, it's just so widespread. So I think Dr. Parrott gave a great lecture on how some ways that you can improve it by, you know, home workstations helps with work life balance and all those things. So I think it's really important we're talking about it. Yeah. I think I was reminded about how there are other people in this world dealing with breast imaging in the sense that, you know, we're always talking about screening mammography at age 40, and you know, we all know it, everybody here knows it. Um, but obviously there's a big part of the world, mainly our patients, maybe other clinicians, that may not understand this guideline. There are other guidelines from different societies, obviously, it can vary from country to country, but there was a very good session um, that was kind of like a mock debate yeah. uh, for screening mammography, and it was just very interesting to see different perspectives. And these are questions, you know, that our patients do ask us, mm -hmm. and those are the people, obviously, that we want to get screened. 
So while it's always great to be with like-minded people um, and we're learning things from each other constantly, I think it's also good to be reminded to put things in the perspective of those that we're trying to improve their care of. Mm -hmm. And also improves our communication with the clinicians who are really the ones who are sending patients to us uh, for these mammograms. So everybody really needs to be on board, um, I think, for the future of breast imaging. Agree, agree, that's wonderful. Yeah, and I was surprised by um, some of the different surgeries that are out there. Again, that, that was a great talk. It's something that I love about this conference is you get to talk to other radiologists and also you get to hear things from um, surgeons, um, medical physicists, a whole group of other people that really make up the team of us being able to do what we do, um, ways that they're decreasing the rate of lymphedema, for example. That, that was um, surprising. Um, and then as far as you know, screening, um, I was surprised to learn what not only some debate in this country, but also what other countries are doing. The intervals may be very different there, like once every three years. So yes. that was surprising as well. Yeah. Yeah. But we do know that the most lives are saved starting annual screening mammography <laughs> yes. at 40 and yeah. screening every year. That's what the data shows, and it continues to be reinforced. Um, no matter how you, you look at it. Actually, the highlight of the conference was I got to sit down for an hour with Dr. Daniel Copin to, <laughs> about why awesome. screening women in 40 is so yes. important. We yeah. recorded for the podcast, and I think it's going to be great. Awesome. So, yeah. so, okay, to round up, what is your favorite moment of the SBI 2022 meeting so far? I think getting to see everybody in person. Yeah. I mean, 100%. there was a, a big break in that. Um, I think it was yeah. two years, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Where everything was virtual, and we really met each other. I met you guys yeah. virtually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was great to get to see you guys in person yeah. and to get to see everyone else talk, um, you know, with the vendors, mm -hmm. ask questions in person, all, all those great things that really come with um, being able to Absolutely. I agree with that. I mean, I, I feel like I've been fangirling a lot of you, you breast radiologists, <laughs> you know, on social media for a while. So it's nice to meet everyone in person. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the point of social media, right, is to bring everyone together from different places um, who have similar interests, motivations, and goals. Um, but of course, having conferences like this means that you can connect using social media, meet these people in real life, um, yeah. do projects together, collaborate on many different, you know, really the. the there's no limit to what you can do. Yeah. Um, and I think social media definitely, obviously, something that we're all very passionate about. Um, and it brought us all together in real life. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have to say, one of the biggest surprises for me was the President's Gala. We did that for the very first time this year. Um, as you may know, it's a fundraising event. It helps to raise money for the Research and Education Foundation for the SBI. It helps to fund travel for trainees to actually come to our national conference. And this year we put on a gala that honored the gold medalists and the outgoing president. And it was just a fantastic event. It wasn't another night of sitting and clapping. We had just the opportunity to network and be on the dance floor. And let me tell you, okay, a certain <laughs> gold medalist who will remain nameless um, was really cutting a rug on the dance floor. There was, I mean, every seat was empty. So it was just a really great addition to the conference. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to be at the President's Gala next year. I love that. Yeah, love oh, a highlight was also filming a TikTok. And we're gonna even, <laughs> speaking of dancing, we're that gonna step that it is. up. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you for the uh, questions you continue to send in from home, all of your participation in the conference. Uh, thankful that you were able to join in this hybrid format. And hopefully we get to see you in person in the future, uh, coming up in the future conferences. Yeah. All right. Yay. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.